This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and this video is the first in a set I'm going to do kind of talking about the idea of um, approaching game development from a project management standpoint. And when I say that, I'm sure like the first thing that comes to a lot of people's minds are things like file management or how you're going to store things like your level data or your save data. But I think to do those things well, you really need to stay, take one more step further back and kind of look at um, this question of where your game logic lies. Now, it does bear mentioning that this is something you should probably do after you've at least created a prototype of your game. But once you're really like married to a, a main game idea and want to move forward with a bigger project, I think it's really this is a good question to ask. And this wasn't in a lot of ways a, a, as big of a question even as close as 10 years ago, maybe even more recent than that, because in a lot of cases, especially when you're looking at you know your AAA studios, but really any prior to the advent of things like Unity and Unreal, um, everyone was creating their own game engines. And one of the rules that a lot of um, developers followed was this idea of separation of duties, which would often result in this, this pattern called model view controller. And I've talked about this in previous series, but as a quick primer, it's basically this idea that everything that your game is running, like kind of in the computer behind the scenes, is the model. Everything that's in charge of putting stuff onto the screen is considered part of the view. And then whatever is handling the uh, player inputs is your controller. And the real the crux of this pattern is that these three things should never really interact any more than they absolutely have to. So in this model view controller system, the game logic always kind of existed in the model part of that. With Unity, however, things aren't quite as clear. And I'm gonna, as an example, throw up this picture of um, one of the projects I'm working on, but just showing this, our editor screen. And when you look at it, um, we're going to ignore the controller side of the pattern for right now because that is pretty well handled um, in the input settings of your game. However, it can bleed in if you're not careful, which is a topic for another day. Um, but looking at this right now, when we look at this idea of the model versus the view, looking at first glance, you might think, oh yeah, you know, it's pretty obvious still here. We've got the scene and the game view, which is our view, and then our model is really handled in things like the inspector. That's where all the data of the game is. But it's not quite as simple as that, because if you really think about it, um, the transform of your of the inspector is really just handling the position and the rotation and the scale of whatever object you have. And that's really more affecting the view than it is anything else in your game. Likewise, when you have things like a mesh renderer that we see here or a sprite render or anything like that, that's all still really just view stuff. So you get this kind of a muddy area in your objects that's kind of... There's data there, but it's still really just impacting the view, especially when you then think about the fact that, well, you could be affecting those different things with model, like your other components after that. It really, it becomes a much messier, there's less of a defined line between the model and the view. So I don't think we can really look at how our game logic is, where it's positioned, based on this idea of the model versus the view anymore. Instead, we really need to look at it in terms of data objects versus game objects. By data objects, I mean anything that really exists in a script, but isn't a component, or if it is a component, it's just kind of attached to an empty object that isn't impacting the world around it. Game objects, on the other hand, are everything that is in your world and is either a part of your world or interacting with your world. Things like your player, your NPCs, your props, your scenery, your landscape, all that kind of stuff is, is game objects. And those are the things that, you know, you really just consider kind of part of the view. They're just, you know, you put them into your scene, now you see them there. But when now that we're adding components to them, we can actually infuse a lot of logic into them and even have the core of our game in a system like Unity running running within those prop objects. That we have. So for example of how we could break this, break this apart, um, here is a quick screenshot from a scene in the game I'm working on right now. It's a top-down RPG. And we have this world here, we've got some different obstacles, we've got trees and rocks and grass, and we have our player character. Now let's say I pressed the, the down button in my game that should make this character walk down on the screen. How is that going to be handled? And the answer of how that is handled will tell us a lot about where the game logic is lying in our game. So for example, if I'm developing this with the logic really existing in the data, 
When I actually press the down button, the player itself doesn't do anything. Instead, what's going to happen is we're going to look at, we probably have some kind of a game controller script. And that's going to be tracking where every object is on a something like a two-dimensional array. If this is a tile-based game, we could kind of see this whole screen that we're seeing here as a bunch of individual, um, individual elements or objects in a two-dimensional array. And then, so each prop, each um, prop, and you know the player and all that that we're seeing here positioned is based on that data array. So when I press that down button, instead of actually moving the character, what we do is we look in that data array, look at the player's position, and then look at the what object is one position below that in that array. And then we kind of ask a lot of questions. We're saying, is there an object there? Is there an obstacle there? Does it block movement? Is it an enemy? Does it cause damage? Check against all of these things. If As long as the player is not blocked from moving down, as long as it's not like a hard object there, then the player can be transposed to that position. And then from there, all of our game objects in our world will kind of take a look and see, hey, has anything changed here? Oh, the player has moved. And so that player object will move itself down. And it might do that either by snapping into position or, you know, kind of translating itself over a few frames. So that's one way. That's handling it in the data. And then everything here, all these, all these game objects that we see on the screen are really kind of they don't even know about each other necessarily. They're really just relying on that data information to tell them where to go. The other approach that we can take um, is when we press the down button, our player object, this, this game object player character, actually does start moving down. And we can either do this by moving its transform position or moving its rigid body by applying a force or a velocity, something like that. Now the player is also probably going to have a collider component on them, which is going to check that as they're moving down, do they hit any other colliders? If we do hit a collider, then we need to check, is this a trigger so I can move through it, or is it not a trigger and it's going to stop me? Is this an enemy? Does it cause damage? All those same questions again. And so instead of looking at data and determining whether or not something should be moved, things are going to try to move, and then the physics engine will kind of help, help us out and handle whether or not the move is successful. Neither is necessarily right or wrong, and it really depends on what you're trying to build. If you're trying to build, say, a roguelike, where you, everything is really tightly adhered to tiles and um, isn't ever going to kind of stray in that way, then a data-driven system is probably really good for you. However, if you're trying to do like a more um, action RPG, like a, you know, kind of like a Legend of Zelda style thing, where you're able to move around more freely, then you probably want to use the component-based system and let Unity's physics engine handle things so that you can move around a little bit more free-flowingly. Again, neither of these is right or wrong. They both just have their own purposes. Now, the important thing about all this in this exercise is that now you know where your stuff is existing, and that's really going to imp impact things, like I've said before, your file hierarchies and you know how your data is structured and things like that. Ultimately, you want those file structures, your um, how you're saving your data, all that stuff, to work with your game design. If you're having to fight the tools you're working with, that's like a number one way that you're not going to finish your game because it's going to be frustrating for you to try and work with that. So it really helps to know what kind of the core spirit of your system is so that you can do things that kind of go with the grain and make the simplest um, and easiest system to work with for you. So anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video um, kind of on that note right now. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of looking at how your game is working and um, how you can work with your game in the future, which can hopefully make you uh, more successful in completing more games. In the meantime, thanks for watching and good luck with your game dev.